Hello and welcome to Washington Execs video series. I'm senior reporter Rachel Kirkland and I am joined by Bridget Chapman, who is Vice President of Inclusion, Diversity and Corporate Responsibility at SAIC. Welcome, Bridget. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Rachel. And so today we are discussing your new role um, and you joined SAIC in 2011. You were most recently Senior Director of Capture Strategy and Business Development for Civilian Markets. What drew you to become interested in your current role? Well, I have had a long history of being heavily engaged in affinity groups, uh, resource groups, um, engaged in a lot of citizenship initiatives, um, community initiatives. And so um, it was a nice transition, um, just giving, given my background. Um, I grew up in an environment where care and feeding of humanity was a priority in our household. Um, my grandmother marched with Dr. King. My parents were heavily engaged in the community. Um, even in college, um, I joined a sorority where there's a lifetime commitment of serving humanity. So this was more or less a nice transition where um, as a business leader, um, I have the opportunity to leverage my authentic self in a role that impacts our employees, our customers, um, our suppliers, and just humanity. So um, I, I think it's a very important role in the company because I see firsthand the value of having a variety of perspectives at the table um, to um, engage in critical conversations around um, new products, innovations, um, how we execute our solutions. And so um, again, it's, it's a good role. And I see this role as meeting the moment um, and that moment um, is a moment where everyone can bring their authentic selves to work and impact what we do every day. And it's an inflection point for not only our nation, but for all of us, as we really think through how do we want to impact um, humanity today um, through everything that we do from um, what we do from as a corporate citizen and our communities and our jobs every day. Absolutely. What goals have you set for the upcoming year and how are you going to accomplish them? Well, first, um, I am grateful that I have an executive leadership team that has actually done a lot of the heavy lifting. And they came up with four pillars. And those pillars are fight racism, bias and prejudice in the workplace, make the environment more inclusive and diverse, support nonprofit organizations that uplift minority communities and measure our results and hold ourselves accountable. So I look at those four pillars every day and then I developed my goals. And so whenever you come into a new position, you definitely wanna look at the current state. And so I, I hosted quite a few focus groups, digital conversations, culture surveys. I met one-on-one -on -one with um, our CEO, our executive leadership team. I heard from our board of directors. So again, at the highest levels in the company, this is very important. And so um, now I'm in the process of analyzing all of this data. And um, the goals out of that will be one, to strengthen our foundation, um, our messaging, the mosaic platform that we use um, for IND to get that engagement and message out across the enterprise and collaborate uh, with um, the enterprise. My goal is to operationalize IND. So I have to get down into the sector and business units and engage the program managers. And so we're working on programs to allow us to do that and have those courageous conversations because you have to get proximate um, if you're gonna really impact the organization and get everyone um, competent and having and feeling comfortable having cultural conversations. Um, in addition to that, we're looking at how we enhance our brand. SCIC has 
done a lot of work when it comes to IND over the years. I've seen it and I've been a part of it, but we don't pat ourselves on the back and share our stories with industry. So we're looking forward to um, our leadership and um, our employees just getting out, telling our story a Absolutely. lot more. And then lastly, um, driving results and holding ourselves accountable. So I'm putting all the processes, tools and policies in, in place to allow us to do that, to measure ourselves as well as report out um, to industry um, for benchmarking. Absolutely. And, you know, you've been talking about, um, you know, company culture to an extent. Can you tell me more about why um, diversity and inclusion are so important to the company and, and to you personally also? Now more than ever, we need to develop a culture that embraces all differences, um, all perspectives, and be intentional about embracing it. And so it's important because we have to look at our talent pool, our products and services, how we engage our customer industry and suppliers, and make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of stamping out racism, bias, and prejudice in the environment. And so it's important um, to the company because it allows us to, to grow, to innovate, and provide better services and solutions to our customer. And it's important to me because I'm part of that culture. I'm part of that team. And so our goal is to leave a long legacy that's enduring for SEIC, that we were part of the solution in terms of impacting humanity uh, and stamping out racism, bias, and prejudice in our environment. Absolutely. And can you maybe share about a time um, when you witnessed a company um, emphasis on diversity and inclusion actually makes a positive difference for that company? Can you share an example, maybe? You know, actually, I'm going to share an example actually from SEIC. Um, most recently, um, we had a customer to visit one of our facilities in Oak Ridge. And as the customer was going through um, that environment, um, she was engaging the employees, um, just really engaged with being in the moment of um, walking through our facility. And so when um, the tour was over, the customer made it a point to say, I have never been to a contractor's facility where I've seen it look like the government. It looked like you know our environment. Um, she said, SEIC really takes diversity and inclusion very seriously. And so she applauded us for having an environment that was diverse. And we're thinking, <laughs> why not? <laughs> yes. So exactly. So we're excited about that that location and those um, leaders are really leaning in to IND and really embracing the importance of it. Um, and so we look to have more of those stories um, across our enterprise. But again, we were very excited to get that feedback actually from the customer. Well, Bridget, um, I look forward to hearing more of those stories from you. Thank you for coming on and sharing your thoughts and perspectives today. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And um, in the spirit of Black History Month, um, I used to always say, Rachel, that um, my favorite quote was by Shirley Chisholm. If they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. Well, my leadership has given me a chair <laughs> at the <laughs> table. And so now I have to say that it's um, the Honorable late John, uh, Congressman John Lewis um, get in good trouble, necessary trouble. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Take care. Thank you so much. <laughs>